everyone. Uh, uh, there were a lot of talks uh, yesterday of interesting, very, very interesting talks, and uh, I hope uh, more, more. Check. Everybody here. All right. Check, check, check. So there are a lot of interesting talks, and I hope uh, my presentation uh, uh, will be interesting too. So my uh, talk called uh, SCADA Deep Inside Protocols and uh, Security Mechanisms. Uh, uh, before we start, a few words about uh, me. Uh, I'm a penetration tester uh, in the Russian security company Positive Technologies. And I'm also a team member of security researchers in SCADA software, uh, SCADA Strange Love team. Uh, well, uh, I made some few uh, top topics of on conferences. And so, uh, as I said, I'm from Russia. <laughs> okay. Uh, a, f a few words. What we, uh, wh what I am going to talk about. Uh, uh, I will give you a brief overview of uh, what is SCADA. Uh, some. Uh, terminology, uh, so I'll describe a little bit the uh, current situation and security uh, of SCADA and uh, we'll give you some overview of most popular uh, protocols because uh, I, I forget that uh, be a penetration test in my main specialization in security research it's industrial protocols. Well, and uh, I will go a little bit later, uh, go deeper. I describe some interesting uh, protocols. Uh, part of them are open, and uh, another one, uh, the proprietary protocols. So, uh, be careful. <laughs> so, uh, I will not talk only about protocols, so I also give, show you interesting features, security features of SCADA software and show some de demos. And uh, the final of my presentation, uh, I will give and show my approach how to analyze uh, proprietary protocols. So, let's start. So, uh, I don't waste uh, time to discuss some ter terminology, uh, terminology words. So, it's the main that we should know uh, and, uh, and to understand that, for example, BLC, it's my best friend in <laughs> security resource. So you can see on the image, it's typical programmable logical controller from uh, Siemens company. Also, a very interesting part of research is uh, HMI, human machine interface, and so on. Well, uh, uh, what is uh, uh, right now the situation uh, in the SCADA vendors? Uh, there are a lot of vendors that, uh, sh uh, that, that gives us a de decision to create uh, automation systems. There are a lot of big vendors like Siemens, General Electric, uh, Schneider and Electric and so on. And uh, most of them give us uh, their own decisions, their own protocols and technologies. It's the main problem in security because each vendor creates their own protocol, technology and so on. Uh, because uh, a lot of uh, vendors, uh, as I said, it's a main problem uh, that uh, they have uh, own technology and protocols. Well, uh, what is also problem in security of uh, SCADA? It's uh, most of them is uh, right now out of date. It's the main approach that if it, it uh, if, if uh, it works, don't touch it. And uh, another one, it's patch patch management cycle uh, because. Uh, we can break, we can reboot the whole system or the part of the system when we apply a new firmware, for example. So I think it's uh, the three kinds described that uh, mostly it's uh, industrial world, it looks like a really wild wild. So what's, uh, what about uh, current situation uh, in uh, industrial uh, security? I think uh, most of uh, uh, most of specialists are thinking that it's absolutely unbreakable. Mm, no, because uh, 
typical network devices uh, s s uh, works with default or crappy uh, settings. Most of them uh, unpatched, uh, not only about uh, uh, engineering stations, uh, all of them uh, all uh, alters dirt and full of junk software. Uh, sometimes during per penetration testing of companies I find out that uh, they set up their wireless access point uh, with uh, very, very uh, old uh, encryption technology like uh, VEEP, uh, if the best happen, but sometimes it's uh, completely open. If you have a uh, big antenna, for example, you, you can connect. So uh, another one uh, that is low physical security. Mm, and uh, the final step is uh, about industrial <coughs> protocols. So I decided to concentrate on uh, protocols because uh, another step is uh, maybe sometimes it's obvious. And so how protocols live in the network? M most of them, uh, and it's a typical situation, uh, they uh, full expense and it's not blocked by uh, network devices, switches, firewalls. Uh, protocol sleeves in uh, uh, all LAN segments and uh, accessed between uh, LAN segments. Uh, uh, industrial protocols easy to detect on the network traffic and uh, sometimes it's easy intercept, analyze, reproduce and replay, not, but not at all. Well, it's most popular list of protocols, uh, most of them uh, well described, uh, for example Modbus, Profibus, Profinet, DNP3 and so on. But uh, some of them mm, not uh, uh, described very well from point of security researcher. <coughs> so it's just a remind what is so see network model. Uh, well, let's start uh, and talk a little bit about a very popular Modbus protocol. It's uh, firstly published by Modicon company. Now it's acquired by Schneider Electric. It was about 35 years ago and uh, the mainly it's widely used for connection industrial uh, network, uh, uh, sorry, electronic devices. Uh, in previous century as a physical layer it uh, was uh, RS232 uh, or RS485. Uh, the next they switched to network uh, TCP stack and a uh, typical standard port for Modbus devices, it's uh, 502. Well, uh, what kind of functions Modbus provides us? It's uh, simply data access, read-write, diagnostic. Uh, it's very interesting function that you can acquire information about the device, their settings and so on. Also, Modbus protocol provide, uh, give us um, uh, to create uh, user-defined functions. Here is a simple uh, example uh, of uh, Modbus network traffic. What kind of tools for Modbus we can uh, we have? It's uh, Wireshark Dissector. Uh, also, my colleague wrote a tool called PLC Scan. It works with P Modbus and uh, Siemens S7 protocol, old old version of S7 protocol. Also, uh, we have for Nmap script to discover Modbus devices and uh, to play with Modbus, we have some simulators. Well, what about security in Modbus? It, uh, it doesn't have no authentication, encryption, and, and as a result, it's, uh, we can say it's no security in protocol. Well, it's uh, some uh, characteristics of uh, headers and fields of Modbus protocol. Well, another one, it's DNP3, it's also very widespread protocol, distributed network protocol. Firstly, it was uh, published, uh, so, sorry, first version was uh, in uh, 1919, and, uh, but only four years ago it was standardized by uh, electronic comp uh, international company. Uh, mainly used for water and uh, electric industry and um, to, uh, to discover devices it's just simply scan at for port number uh, to uh, 20,000 and uh, what kind of tools it's also Wireshark the sector and uh, we have free implementation of the NP3 network protocol 
uh, some security features, but uh, it's not very uh, implemented and it, it's not really implemented in real situations. It's uh, the MP3 secure authentication. Uh, we have it's part of um, standard and it shows you how to uh, uh, authenticate users and devices and how to protect data. But it, in real situation, I've never seen that it's uh, already implemented in uh, industry companies. Here is a few characteristics of the MP3 frame. Well, so next, the next one, one of uh, interesting for, for me, especially for me, is Profinet uh, Family Network Protocols. Uh, most uh, we have a few uh, protocols in Profinet CBA, IO, and so on. And uh, I'm, I will talk about uh, DCP. It's, uh, it is a discovery and simple configuration protocol. Uh, Profinet works on second layer of uh, network stack. It has uh, the net uh, uh, header uh, 8892 and uh, the main mainly used to exchange in real time and real cycles uh, between devices some data. Uh, also it has some interesting characteristics that uh, multicast discovery uh, devices and stations. So, because it works on second layer, it's no security as a result. Well, as I said, uh, we will talk about uh, Profinet DCP. It's simply discover devices, obtain information about devices, and uh, it has some features to uh, set up some settings of uh, uh, devices. So, it's, uh, for example, you can see a simple uh, yeah, it's a simple uh, example of how to ident send identify multicast request on the network and uh, to get uh, information about devices. Here is uh, hex values of the packet data. Well, it's example for SCAPI Python. Well, the main interesting field uh, for me during the uh, Profinet research was that uh, playing with option and sub-option. Uh, here is... Uh, uh, it's the f f last uh, uh, two bytes of the header. Well, uh, for example, we can set uh, get network information with option uh, in hex 1 and sub-option 2. Uh, for example, we can send uh, LED flashing it's, uh, to a device with option uh, 5 and sub-option 3. Well, as a result, we can scan a uh, whole network, whole uh, mm, physically accessed network, because we work uh, on second layer. Uh, we can scan Profinet supported devices, uh, not only PLC, but uh, also uh, engineering stations, HMI, RTU, and so on. Uh, with Profinet, we can change the name of the station, change uh, its more important network settings, for example, and uh, send LED flash, it means from the point of view of, for example, of engineers, that something wrong with uh, PLC or HMI. Well, uh, here is an example how it works. It, it, uh, I wrote Python script that uh, one of them works on raw sockets and another one for SCAPI. Well, uh, the final, finally, I wrote a simple fuzzer to send. Uh, 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 to send re uh, requests uh, playing with sub-option and option and the, as a result I, I found out some interesting uh, uh, CVE that attacker uh, could call the device to go to an defective mode so that simply sending a specially crafted uh, Profinet packet. So what is a specially crafted Profinet packet? It's just simple, you send uh, network settings with all zeros, IP, net mask and uh, gateway. <laughs> yeah, so I will show you uh, some example, how it works. Just a second. Uh, 
something, right? So firstly, we scan the network. Uh, option is network inf interface, so we receive the an ans answer. You can see that uh, PLC has a uh, P address like this, and this uh, MAC address of device. So it's easy. Then we send uh, some options to set up network information. We should provide source MAC address and destination MAC address and network settings. Right now, we, I don't remember my interface, my address. Okay. In combination with uh, another vulnerability of PLC, uh, Profinet vulnerability and another one that I will show a little bit later, it's more po powerful uh, in the hands of attacker. So before we start uh, network information, we just ping in uh, our network device. It's, it will be still pinged, uh, but uh, here is uh, the, to ensure that uh, web interface, for example, of PLC working well. Before we start, So, okay. Well, we sent uh, packet data, as you can see, pinging not uh, replied right now. And again, starting to reply. And right now, you'll see in uh, defective mode. Uh, on the top of the PLC, you can find that uh, uh, LED flashing. Yeah. It's okay. Well, stop, stop, stop. It's another one. Just a second. Well, a few words about another very popular protocol, Goose. Uh, Goose is generic object-oriented substation events uh, abbreviation. Uh, there is a list of few characteristics, but most of interesting for me, it's. Uh, uh, also, as Profinet, it works on a second layer. It uses uh, VLAN technology and uh, it has uh, two characteristics of data. First of them, it has a message prior priority level and uh, a retransmission mechanism. It means that uh, when we, uh, for example, we get a new data, we send with a flag that is a new data. And uh, following this, uh, you can f uh, imagine some attack scenarios. For example, it's uh, easy to receive multicast broadcast packets. Also, it's easy to analyze, modify, and replay. Uh, following the that it has, for example, um, just a second, uh, message priority. For for example, we can make a DDoS of devices that support Goose protocol. And by manipulating the state number and packet, we can control all the data uh, on the network and also LAN hopping. Well, it's some tools. Uh, usually, it's also Wireshark Dissector. And it's easy to create, uh, for example, on SCAPI framework. Another one uh, f Popular to, uh, popular two protocol is manufacturing message specification. It's abbreviation of one IAC protocol. Well, here's uh, functions. For example, we can read, write, uh, text, uh, some registers or variables uh, on the controller, on devices. We can send a packet uh, that will start, stop, or rewrite firmware in PLC and read, write some kind of files or directories of context of uh, device and protocol of uh, MMS. Well, uh, there is no security feature except a simple methods whitelist. It means that uh, some devices has a list of methods that uh, all of the, uh, each other supports. 
Well, uh, also it's in theory, uh, we have a uh, TLC implementation, but in practice I never seen that it's already supported by vendors and uh, in products I haven't seen. Also, it has Varshak dis dissector, and uh, I wrote Python and Nmap scripts, uh, which can uh, find out and identify devices with MMS protocol. Uh, Here is an example of networked traffic. Uh, well, it's an uh, example of how it works. And Nmap script. Another one is uh, I see uh, 101, 104. It's a little bit different between uh, because uh, 104 works on uh, network level uh, TCP stack uh, there is uh, a huge list of functions it also depends on vendors which implemented uh, this kind of protocol uh, what about security it's a simple IP address white list so uh, as you know it's easy to spoof IP addresses well what kind of tools so also, we have simulators, Wireshark Dissector, and uh, also I wrote Python and Map Script to identify devices which support this kind of protocol. Well, here is a simple example uh, of network traffic. Uh, well, it's uh, how it works in Map Script to identify devices with uh, IC 104 protocol. Well, uh, Pre previous protocols was uh, open uh, and uh, next will be a proprietary protocol uh, by Honeywell company. Uh, it's fault tolerant Ethernet. It's not only a protocol, it's uh, technology which provides robust and low cost uh, for industrial networks. Uh, the main idea of FT is that each uh, node connected twice to the network and uh, each uh, connected device supporting in real time uh, actual routing table uh, how to send uh, data between devices. Well, um, FTE uses uh, UDP protocol as a transport and as I said it's proprietary. Well, uh, during penetration testing of uh, an industrial company when I saw FTE is I, I imagined uh, some kind of attack vectors, successful attack. For example, it's easy to flu UDP ports and uh, send multicast packets uh, with fake routing table. And it means that uh, you can control, modify in real time uh, all the data that change uh, nodes uh, between each other on the network. So here's a simple example of multicast packet of FTE node. Well, uh, some characteristics of data. Uh, for example, in hex 23, it's node index. It's uh, some kind of uh, number or address uh, between uh, network devices with FTE network. Well, uh, each device provides a node name. Honeywell C300 uh, and uh, it has some packets uh, counters and in and, and the bottom of the um, data we have uh, full uh, information about firmware so we can see it's uh, implemented and compiled uh, two, 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 six years ago. Well, uh, the big part about Siemens and of my talk, it's uh, not only about uh, S7 protocol, but also about uh, Siemens uh, SCADA software uh, called TIA portal. Well, firstly, I think it's main interest of security researchers and another one, uh, real people, that what's, how works uh, users and passwords and uh, user rights protection and permissions. For example, from the side of uh, TA portal, you can uh, configure and set up password uh, that uh, uh, read and create a contr on controller read write protection for main and critical uh, functions. For example, uh, it protects CPU uh, start stop, uh, data change, uh, for example, it's project upload and so on. Well, 
Here is uh, uh, TA portal uh, has a project file called uh, P data, for example, and uh, I don't know for what, but uh, TA portal store is previously set up uh, 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 passwords. It has passwords history on the file, so all passwords uh, encrypted with SH1 algorithm, but uh, some interesting field of the PA da data that uh, Redbox value you can see that uh, it help us to crack the passwords in real. Sometimes it's really really easy and uh, re in real time. And Redbox value shows us which the length of the password. For example, seven. It's, it means that password was uh, length of three. For example, one two three. Okay. Uh, when we sent notification to Siemens, uh, they uh, about this. It's not really a security feature, but they uh, improved. They strange the user password and switched to MD5. Some strange. Uh, okay, I wrote simple Python scripts that can extract uh, password hashes, and you can brute force it. Uh, well, uh, okay, what about uh, user rights? Um, in the last um, TA portal version, uh, you can um, set up some user rights. And uh, as you can see on the left uh, image, you can see that some of uh, them not accessible from through user interface. But if you change on PA da data uh, a few bytes, uh, you can will be a super administrator, I think. Uh, you can see on the left of the image. Uh, sorry, right. Uh, just ch change two bytes. Uh, I will show you here. Here it is. Uh, this one. Okay. Mm, so, uh, more interesting part of uh, how works, uh, how authenticated uh, the SCADA software. Uh, it's not only TA portal, also HMI and another one, and PLC. Uh, so uh, it's uh, widespread and uh, typical uh, authentication scheme, uh, challenge response. Well, it uses uh, HMAC and SH1 algorithms. So I wrote uh, Python script for especially for uh, controllers. Uh, to 1200 and uh, 1500. Uh, they extract uh, all challenge responses and um, also export into John the Reaper format and you can simple brute force it. Okay, it's uh, offline brute force and here is an uh, example uh, how it works. Well, uh, to be honest, for previous version, uh, for uh, 1200 it can give you information that uh, uh, challenge response authentication was success, uh, that the password was uh, correct. But uh, for an another version of the controller, we don't know. Maybe you know. Well, uh, I wrote also a uh, Hydra model to brute force uh, PLC passwords online. Uh, uh, it's, it works on uh, old uh, version of Siemens S7 protocol and uh, uh, you can find out a lot of S7, S300, uh, 200 or 400, it also should work on this kind of PLC. You can find uh, a lot of de connected devices to internet through Shodan and simple brute force. Okay, here is a uh, part of Hydra module. Uh, uh, brute force in uh, PLC and uh, everybody see normal that code. So uh, it, it is uh, two interesting things, crappy things about security, who knows. So <laughs> the second line of the code shows us that uh, password len should be only eight, <laughs> not more eight. Okay. Um, case, sorry. 
mixed case or just a uh, mixed case. Well, but uh, here is some preparation of password. If password len uh, user password more than eight, it's uh, skipped. It it uh, takes only first eight characters, and if password uh, less than eight, it uh, can contaminate it with appropriate number of spaces. Okay, so is uh, this kind of encryption? So it's as you can see, it's a simple xorin of <laughs> characters. Okay, good security. Well, here's. Uh, how to get, how to obtain full access to, just a second, PLC. Okay. So firstly I'll show you that we have this kind of IP address. Well, the first step, <coughs> let's imagine that attacker uh, connected to internal network and we send uh, Profinet identifier request. We find out that our PLC and another one network, okay, and we don't have uh, access, for example. Okay, so we send Profinet packets to change uh, the network settings and uh, as a result we, it, uh, we, 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 we ha will have access to PLC it's only to ensure that we do not really connect it Okay, we got a response that network, so just ensure that IP address of PLC changed. Okay. Again. <coughs> well, it's a typical network interface of uh, PLC. So let's imagine that uh, administrator goes to web interface, input uh, real login and password, so on. And uh, for example, PLC started. Okay. How to get access? Usually you can uh, simple spoofing on the network, but we will do by another way. So we can see that uh, we get some uh, numbers, it's two numbers, and send, uh, try to brute force uh, cookie. Sometimes, sometimes it can be success in a few seconds, but sometimes it can take uh, some minutes. Okay, so let's ensure that we don't know your real username or password from the attacker's point of view. Well, this ops, 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 we, we find out real valid cookie. Just kill Python script. Okay, let's copy paste. <laughs> Reload. And whoops, we are administrator. And we can go to, we can stop PLC.
Okay, so now I will explain how it works. So it's a story about some vulnerability which uh, our team found out previous year. Well, we tested on uh, some uh, on two versions of PLC Siemens S7. Here is a description uh, from uh, uh, NDIST, as I remember, site. Uh, it means that uh, the main problem of PLC is uh, low entropy of uh, PRNG. Well, uh, uh, we tested on uh, 7 uh, 1200 with this kind of uh, firmware. Well, uh, firstly, let's take a look of uh, four examples of real authentication cookie. So it's as you can see it's base 64 encoded. It's simple and uh, if you take a look of the hex values of uh, cookies you can find out some patterns who can see. <laughs> Oh, well, it's uh, obviously that some kind of uh, right part or it's uh, repeated on the cookie and the first part, some kind of the land, for example, it's, uh, it's MD5, okay. Well, I divided uh, the cookie in two parts and uh, the next I divided to uh, here the six parts. Well, in trying to figure out uh, what is it, what its values, uh, playing with uh, authentication of, uh, process, I find out that, well, its uh, first part was uh, MD5 of something, something we, 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 which right now we don't know. The next value was 4 bytes of some constant value. Next 2 bytes was uh, number of uh, user logout. The next two bytes was a counter of uh, issued cookies to this kind of user. And uh, the next uh, four bytes was a value that doesn't matter for us. We can only fill this with zeros on another one. Well, uh, next four bytes was a user IP address. It's easy to spoof. And uh, another big part was a value that uh, also doesn't matter for us. So, firstly, we can figure out what is uh, MD5. So, during some kind of reverse engineering of firmware of PLC, uh, we figure out that MD5 of next, 60, uh, next uh, 26 bytes of cookie value, plus 16 bytes of some secret, and plus 2 null bytes. Well, what is this secret? Uh, usually, it's a secret. Uh, uh, we f we decided that uh, it secret generates after PLC start by some kind of per PNG. It's we figure out on well uh, reverse engineering of uh, firmware. Uh, PNG it's a little bit harder than the standard uh, C generator, and uh, for PNG we use this, uh, two bytes as a seed. And you, you can see part of uh, Python code, how it works. So, a lot of uh, value right now to create a brute forcer. So, because PLC is so tender sometimes. Well, what is a seed? Uh, seed uh, very often depends on, on time value. And uh, by practical way, uh, playing with PLC authentication, uh, I figure out that seed it's PLC start time plus some constant value. Uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's constant value by practical way because PLC, uh, PLC generate is a secret after about three or four uh, seconds when PLC start and uh, it uses a current time on the PLC. So how to obtain PLC start time? So it's obvious that it's current time minus uh, uptime. Well, current time you can obtain without any problems through web interface, as you can see on the in image. And uh, uh, uptime you can get through SNMP request 
if uh, SNMP enabled on PLC. By default, uh, I think uh, by default it's uh, uh, enabled, and uh, Siemens hard coded uh, SNMP pu uh, public and private uh, strings, community strings, and it's not changeable. Interesting. Here is an ex uh, example how uh, we sent with Nmap. Well, uh, here is a part of Python code how to get uh, the seed range. Uh, constant value uh, 100 is uh, uh, calculation labs, for example. Uh, so right now, uh, to generate cookie, we should brute force uh, logout number. It's two bytes. The number of issued cookies, two bytes, and seed value, two bytes, but maximum values it's 100. So still too many value to brute force we, because we can go to put PLC to the defective mode. It's not our uh, main goal. Well, next I decided to play with logout, login, logout, login, how it works, and I uh, figure out. But if user uh, not log it out properly, then after seven logins, it's not possible to login again. Uh, so we, right now we should restart PLC uh, and or wait uh, 30 minutes. It's a cookie expire time. So right now we can minimize logout and issued cookie values, uh, uh, sorry counters to seven. And uh, so right now we can generate cookie. Should br brute force not so many values on logout numbers. It's seven number of issued cookies also maximum seven and seed value maximum. Uh, 100. Well, I wrote uh, two Python scripts. Uh, first of them get seed range that sent a raw SNMP request only to obtain uh, uptime and to grab information through web interface and calculate in seed range. And uh, as you can saw in demo, we can generate real valid cookie and authenticate it. Well, some strange I can think in authentication scheme. It doesn't require any username or password. Well, uh, it's two dependencies of exploitation, uh, successful exploitation. Mm -hmm. It should be more than one, uh, one or more, uh, sorry, uh, success begins to PLC after last uh, restart. Uh, because uh, uh, when uh, success, first login success uh, on PLC, it's in internal memory creates some kind of table with, with issued cookies. Well, it's, you can see uh, vulnerability timeline. It took a lot of uh, months to uh, release patch. Uh, about uh, one a year, a little bit. Okay, uh, also very, very popular nowadays heartbleed also. A lot of vendors' devices uh, affected to this kind of vulnerability uh, because of patch management cycle. Uh, I think it will be a long, long story uh, because of patch man but management devices with life cycle about sometimes it's uh, 10 or 15 years. So on uh, I see a cert, you can find out a lot of uh, vendors with open SSL vulnerabilities. Uh, also Siemens might. Uh, also seen as vulnerable uh, to hard bleed, so I will show you. Uh, it's not hard. Mm. Well, we started uh, to grab memory from device, and let's imagine that uh, real administrator connected to. WinCC, it's kind of a uh, web interface of HMI. Well, it's uh, as you can see, it's basic as, as authorization. Strange is asked again. Well, we already uh, grab authorization uh, from the log file. It 
So I don't show you real <laughs> password because it's our testing laboratory. So we stop to, to grab memory from uh, VCC web server. Well, it's base uh, base 64 encoded values. Well, let's close the window and send uh, grabbed uh, value to base 64 decode. Administrator and some kind of password. You can guess that it's simple. A little bit <laughs> more <laughs> characters. <laughs> okay, we copy paste password. It's not a trick. Okay, it works. <laughs> uh, stop. Well, we don't have enough time, I think. Let's continue. Uh, a few words about a seven proprietary protocol. It's it, it's it's my headache because I work with the seven uh, protocol last last uh, version of the seven and a lot of my work time. Well, it's uh, you can see a standard scheme of how protocol seven works on ISO-C model. It uses standard TCP port one hundred two. Uh, it works by Siemens terms on ISO and TCP uh, based uh, communication protocol. Well, in context of uh, research, it doesn't matter for us. Just it, it's a little bit different from uh, TCP. Well, uh, what kind of materials of research were interesting uh, was uh, by uh, made, uh, was made by uh, Dylan Beresford, uh, exploiting Siemens semantics and PLC. Firstly, he, he showed his presentation made, uh, uh, I think, it's on Black Hat. For previous versions, we have Wireshark Dissector. It's easy. Some, we have some kind of uh, free communication library, Libnode Dave. Uh, it's, it's two for previous versions of uh, 7 protocol. And also a Snap 7 and PLC scan. As I said, it's based, based on ISO uh, on a TCP protocol. It's, it means that it's block-oriented protocol. Each block called PDU, protocol data unit, and uh, mm, functions and comments-oriented uh, protocol. It means that uh, each frame contains request or response for uh, function, some function. Well, a uh, list of S7 comments is huge, but most of interesting is uh, with S7 we can uh, start or stop CPU, send firmware update, read write some kind of data, blocks, text, uh, we can grab system information, and more interesting for me, it's authentication scheme. Well, as I said, uh, 7 has previous versions called S5. Uh, and uh, next version we called uh, seven communication, and uh, the final uh, in our research we called another seven. Well, it's a simple how it, it is simple another seven here of the frame. Well, uh, for all versions, as I said, we have virtual dissectors, some kind of tools, libraries, and uh, but uh, because we know. Uh, all about that version of protocol, but we know next to nothing about the another seven. So I decided to figure out how it works and uh, mm, create some useful and helpful scripts to parse uh, to that that helps me to understand the packet uh, fields. Uh, well, firstly, when you can see some kind of hex mess of the network traffic. Well, uh, the main approach I 
uh, I got from uh, Rob Savoy. Uh, he's very interesting. I highly recommend it if you are interested in proprietary protocols. Uh, very interesting uh, talk uh, was in Fosdem five years ago, reverse engineering of proprietary protocols. And the main idea that was <laughs> if, you, uh, if you stare at the hex dumps long enough, you can uh, start to see some patterns. Well, uh, it's a simple example of not very good quality. Well, it's uh, uh, how works, uh, how I parse with Python scripts, uh, communication traffic of a 7 protocol. Well, first script, it's show byte sequences. Uh, it's show repeated sequences of network traffic. Well, the next one, it shows uh, some kind of payloads and uh, uh, colorize some fields if you if you're trying to figure out what these fields means. And uh, as a result, I wrote, uh, I can call it uh, the part of uh, Python dissector for a 7 uh, protocol. It shows you the packet structure. Well, and, uh, at the end of my presentation, I want to say that uh, just use your knowledge about protocols because um, from the uh, security researchers' uh, point of view, it's universal and complex uh, approach because you can patch uh, software, but protocols uh, lives long enough, and you can, uh, with your knowledge about protocols, you can detect devices and their uh, protocols. You can monitor state commands and exchanging data, and uh, using some uh, scripts and technologies, you can inject, modify, and reply packets in real time, because uh, most of them are insecure by design. So I'll give you some real example. Well, during the penetration testing of some energetic company, uh, I got a traffic dump and trying to figure out what is, what is it, how it works. Well, it was uh, traffic between uh, PLC, which sends some data, some kind of hex mess to RTU, which then sent uh, special commands to energetic turbine. Well, as a result, uh, I figure out that it's a simple UDP packet that sets speed of uh, turbine to 57. Well, minimum value was uh, zero and maximum 100. Okay. Well, what do you think, what will happen if you send another packet, another value to a PLC? It's really, it's, it, it was really to uh, replay. Okay, you're right. <laughs> well, uh, at the end of presentation, all scripts, all tools that I made and wrote, all, they, all of them are uh, open source and accessible on GitHub. Well. I want to say thanks and greets to my colleagues and full Skada Strange Love team. So, thank you. If you have a questions, just feel free to ask me. Thank you. Are there any protocols uh, that would be used for uh, PLC snapping that are not cut? That's for authentication, uh, the, uh, encryption and everything. Uh, sorry, what do you mean of crap? Are there any good protocols, any, any, like, any implementations or protocols that can authentication and everything mm, I think some of them are really good, for example, S7. It's really hard to understand what's going on, but most of them is uh, that they uh, open sourced, or for example, FTE technology or this uh, the end of protocol that I showed you. Uh, it's, they are proprietary, but they don't have any authentication. Uh, what, what kind of data send it? Uh, authorization of sender and so on. For example, most of popular protocols like uh, Modicon, DNP3, they was designed uh, a lot of years ago, and uh, engineers uh, don't care about security. They don't care only of 
life cycle, I think, and uh, how data uh, the, the data should be exchanged between devices in real time, real cycle. But some uh, security features increase uh, the gap of time between data changes. Yep. I have a non technical question. I left the, uh, the industry 10 years ago uh, in industrial automation. But and many of the security problems I've sort of seen were more down to bad engineering of PLCs or their environment. But what I also remember is that a lot of vendors were, if not arrogant, then sometimes outright hostile towards uh, engineers actually explaining them that some things were not as safe as they were supposed to be, at least in the environments where they were deployed. Have you seen any change in that uh, attitude from the big vendors? Mm. Any change in in attitudes towards uh, security-related issues? Um, well, do they address them any better in the last decade? Uh, some big uh, vendors try and uh, to uh, reply quickly to security features, security problems. But uh, for example, especially for Siemens, they have a big uh, patch management uh, time, but. Uh, Mm, not uh, only vendors, but uh, some companies, industrial companies, uh, last years from, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, from the Stuxnet time, mm -hmm. uh, four years ago, they started to care about security and started to uh, create, to ask the penetration testers, some companies to discover, to check their uh, uh, internal network. But nowadays, it's uh, a lot of devices uh, and a lot of uh, network and companies that uh, fully connected to internet yeah. and accessible. I know. Uh, so it's no longer that the first reply is from the lawyer telling you to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean? Well, that was a question. That's the, apparently not the first response anymore. They actually do take their. Um, their report seriously, I get. Because I really have been out of that industry for 10 years, so I really wouldn't know anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how to say okay. that. No, because you are pen doing pen testing, so I assume that if you do find a vulnerability, you would have interaction with some of these companies. Sure, uh, we are interacting uh, with this company, firstly. And you don't get an immediate uh, reply from the lawyers? Mm. Okay, fair <laughs> no, enough. No. That was the question. Yep. Any answer? Okay, if no questions, just feel free to ask me. Thank you.